What's happening, hardscapers? This is episode 35 of the How to Hardscape podcast, where we talk with you about how you can start and grow your hardscaping business. And today we're joined by Greg Borger. He is the president and founder of Stone Deck Innovations in Canada. And he was on last episode talking about an alternative for traditional wood decking. And he's back to talk about a couple more options. And that includes paver deck and tile deck, two additional alternative options for decks that you can lay pavers right on top of. Head on over to stonedeck.ca to learn more about all the different products that we'll be talking about. And if you're interested, if you are a contractor in Canada, you can be sure to join their referral network to get some leads coming into your business. So without further ado, let's get right into our interview. All right, Greg. So in the last interview, we talked about the silica grate system and what that can do for contractors and installing it. And we mentioned this paver deck and this is the, the product that first caught my eye, uh, a while back. I've had one encounter with it and love the system. And I, I think, uh, it, it's definitely a great system for contractors to go to homeowners to be able to offer it to them. And can you talk a little bit more about this paver deck and what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Again, thank you for uh, having me on again. So when I sort of introduced myself on the last uh, episode, I sort of talked about the evolution of uh, Stone Deck Innovations. So Paver Deck was sort of the the next uh, product that uh, we kind of added with the same kind of idea of creating that uh, beautiful maintenance-free stone deck without having to do the excavation. And sort of what kind of drove me with that is, if those of you remember from our last uh, episode, we spoke of um, Silka System, which was a product manufactured in the U.S., while we were and still are selling it, uh, our Canadian dollar a number of years ago took uh, quite a bit of a hit. And obviously, uh, you know, keeping our products within a sort of a reasonable price point, I started looking for, you know, other products out on the market that we could potentially sort of bring in. And I found a company located in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario uh, called Evolution Decks, who is the manufacturer of both paver deck and now tile deck. And uh, I reached out to them and started to learn more uh, about their product and, and understanding their product. And, uh, you know, the evolution with that is I initially brought that in to uh, use it on, on some of the jobs that we were still doing. And then uh, over time, uh, started being able to, you know, sell it under the uh, Stone Deck Innovation brand. And, you know, over time was able to uh, get the Canadian distribution. So we are now the Canadian distributor for Paper Deck and Tile Deck. The Paper Deck basically is a similar concept for those of you that remember me talking about the Silica Systems. So what it is, it's, it's basically a galvanized steel frame structure along with the subfloor that comes together as a kit and is put together ready to be cladded in stone. How does it compare an installation to, say, a wood deck? So the installation is is quite similar. The difference, obviously, is is working with metal versus working with wood. So, you know, when we talked about uh, Silka System, if a contractor was uh, creating a deck using Silka System, any of the lumber products, they could go to their supplier or to the big box store and get the appropriate lumber products that they would need to uh, reinforce or to build a new deck to support the Silka grates, anything that they would use for cutting would be standard, you know, saws uh, that cut wood versus the, the paver deck. It comes as a kit. So everything that is needed for that deck is shipped out and supplied by us to, to the contractor or to the homeowner. And then with respect to having to cut it, you know, now you're needing, um, I wouldn't call them specialty tools, but just different tools. They can be cut with four inch angle grinder with abrasive blades or, uh, diamond uh, steel blades. Um, most contractors will have their quick cut saws. So it's just a matter of getting either, uh, the appropriate abrasive blade or, uh, a diamond blade designed to cut steel with your quick cut to cut it. So the construction is is very similar so when a when a contractor is working with with a homeowner or if we're working with a homeowner with respect to a design we will take the the design that they need so if, if a contractor reaches out to us and says you know this homeowner has a patio that's three feet off the ground and they want a 10 by 10 deck so you know we're going to be asking the um, the contractor a couple of questions are you attaching to the house or is it freestanding what is the thickness of stone what is the postal code where this deck is uh, being installed so we can look at the uh, 
the snow loads and recommend the appropriate amount of footings. So if we use that same example that, you know, this deck is going to be attached to the house, it's a 10 by 10 deck, and it's going to be located in the in the Ottawa area. So then we know that we are going to be putting together a kit where it's going to need one beam, two footings. So those can be either mechanical screw piles or concrete footings. And we send the appropriate pieces uh, along with that deck, which would include, you know, your starters, your, your field panels, your end panels, your fascia, all your screws to basically put that together. So um, the, the, this will come uh, all on one pallet. All the screws that we provide are, are self-tapping, galvanized, so they work uh, well with the, um, the galvanized metal of the kit. And the contractor would basically put it together in the same manner that they would use uh, in terms of framing a deck. They would, you know, they would attach uh, a ledger board. In this case, you know, it'd probably be a four by four by one and a quarter uh, iron lentil that's, uh, you know, screwed onto the foundation of the house. That's going to catch the one end of the paver deck. Uh, at the other end, you're going to have your paver deck beam that comes with it, also galvanized steel that's supported by the two screw piles. Uh, and then the rest of the panels are, are put together and screwed in, and you're able to create a, a solid steel deck that, uh, again, is, is not going to shift or move because it's done properly that can now be cladded in stone. Yeah, and I've seen this get thrown up extremely fast, extremely efficiently, and uh, it's an it's an incredible product. Now, when in terms of cladding, would you recommend the same same process that we talked about in the previous interview, where we were talking about the silica grate system? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the the cladding options are, are are endless, right? I mean, you can use any stone on the market to go on top of the paver deck. The cladding is the same sort of concept. You're going to frame your walls. So again, with the framing of this, you know, any of the big box stores has the galvanized two by fours that I think most contractors or homeowners are familiar with for framing basements. Uh, you'd create your sidewall framing, screw in your half inch cement board onto that, and then you, the the cladding on that goes around the side and then the stone is laid on top you're using polymeric sand if you're using a style of stone that 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 you want that look you're putting down geotextile down first and then you're laying your stone and again if you go to stonedeck.ca under our paver deck page uh, we have uh, under the resources we have you know detailed instructions on how to build stairs with paver deck uh, how to work with and install paver deck and then in our gallery section for paver deck under stonedeck.ca there's there, there's lots of examples right so building you know a handicap ramp that, that that's never going to move right and again that's the beauty of this and you know for us it's it convincing contractors that you know these are products that they they should look at right i mean one of the challenges we, we we've kind of always had is as human beings we're, we're creatures of habit right so contractors well i've done it like this for 10 years why would i change why would i look at something else right but again i mean as technology and techniques evolve there are quicker and more cost effective ways uh, of doing things right so if a contractor can do two jobs in the week that would normally take them to do one job well if you're doubling the amount of work the, the profit is going to be there, right? I mean, uh, you know, uh, contractors that are in Canada or northern uh, United States where our season is very much dictated by the winter and, you know, the frost conditions, you know, these products, paver deck, tile deck, silica system, they're, they're fantastic for that because, you know, even if there's a lot of frost, uh, if I'm using something like a mechanical screw pile, I can basically break through the, the frost and drive that pile in. And now I've created that footing to support that deck. And if I'm a contractor that chooses to build or work over the winter, I can still do that as opposed to traditional build and excavation methods where the frost is, you know, deep or, uh, you know, depending on the other soil factors, you know, you may not be able to work uh, through the winter. And, you know, the cost savings uh, in terms of time are, are, are huge. You know, two examples I can specifically speak to is, um, you know, I refer to a 10 by 10 deck. So there was a homeowner that wanted a, uh, and, and this is a 12 by 12 deck, and a contractor went out with, with two individuals, 8 o'clock in the morning, while they were there, uh, they were attaching the iron lentil to the side of the house as a, a screw pile company arrived to drive two piles in as they were attaching the iron lentil. A screw pile company put in uh, two screw piles left and they had the entire paver deck structured, completed up and standing by 11 o'clock in the morning. 
So now you're ready to lay your capstones in that. So that 12 by 12 deck uh, with, you know, capstones being laid and dried and sidewalls is potentially completed in, you know, two or three days, which is, you know, extraordinary uh, in terms of savings. If you're dealing with a backyard with limited access, a lot of the, the companies that drive uh, screw piles have some pretty uh, amazing machines that they can walk behind where they can get it through a 36 inch gate. And then all the, the pieces of, of paver deck can just be hand bombed in the back. So you're not taking apart gates or fences. You're not excavating. You're, the savings are, are huge. If uh, your listeners want to visit, uh, you know, especially like as a contractor on our website, stonedeck.ca, and they go to galleries and they go to paver deck, they'll see one with a ramp. So that was a deck that was uh, four feet uh, off the ground, uh, 20 feet out, 40 feet across, uh, has an extensive handicap access ramp along the one side and six foot wide stairs. The contractor that was building that never worked with paver deck before, so we sent out a guy to basically teach his crew. On Monday morning, we started building the um, the paver deck. The piles were all put in Friday with the contractor sending one foreman there to drive the pile locations. Uh, so Monday morning, we started, and he had a four-person crew plus one of my guys to teach them how to work with the paver deck. By Tuesday noon, they were done putting up all the steel on a 20 by 40 with a ramp and stairs. The contractor then started uh, laying the stone. He used the Permacon grid cage system for the veneer cladding stone and a Teckle Block Blue 45. And by Friday at lunchtime, I got a text from him showing me pictures of the completed deck. So that's an incredible speed for a four foot high stone deck that's never going to move. And that that's been installed in uh, Quebec, northern Quebec. It's going on four winters now. And again, there's been zero issues with heaving, shifting or callback. And then when, when you're getting into the warranty that this paver deck offers, I know it's something incredible. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a 30 year warranty on, on the paver deck itself, right? And, and we even have anodes, which basically are sacrificial pieces of metal that you can attach uh, to the deck and replace as needed that uh, further extend the life. I mean, again, if I was looking at building a paver deck, yeah, you know, putting one of these anodes on for that extra peace of mind is, is, is a fantastic option. But I mean, the, you know, this is, this is a product that definitely lasts a lifetime and n- never have any type of issues with. And then uh, in terms of, again, talking about those variances, is Paver Deck a little bit more forgiving in being able to, say, screed uh, some sand over top of the uh, geotextile fabric that you would put on top of it because it is, you know, there's there's less holes than the Silka Great system? Both systems, whether it's Silka system or, or Paver Deck, I mean, if you're using a good quality geotextile, so for example, the ones that we use and recommend for these products is uh, is a seven ounce. It's an EX160. It's it's one of the thickest commercial ones, and you know you spend a little bit of money up front, and what it does is it, it it's not going to stretch or or move on you. You know, both of these systems, just think of them as a solid subfloor. So once you put down your geotextile, regardless of the of the condition of the stones, I mean, you can use the appropriate amount of polymeric sand or washed sand to get that base that you you need leveled quickly and effectively right there's not going to be any issues the paver deck itself like we have all the the loads for that so you know depending on the style of stone that you're using again you want to know the foot pounds of that stone you know is it a uh, you know 45 mil stone coming in at about uh, 17 to 19 you know pounds per square foot are we using a 60 mil uh, stone which is going to be closer to 30 you know the paver deck itself is um, nine pounds per square foot. So those are all things that you're going to take into consideration for for the build. And you, you've heard me mention on both uh, last one and this cast, I mean, I'm a big fan of mechanical screw piles because just the speed of, of the installation, right? I mean, w- when they come out, if, you know, when I'm telling them I need two two piles to, to support this deck, the dead load of the uh, of the deck is such they now know exactly the torque and the depth of each pile that they, they need to drive and the beauty of, you know, using these various companies that are out there. I mean, any of the reputable companies warranty their work, right? And you can get an engineering report for their work, right? So they're just a perfect fit. Now, when it comes to laying pavers on top of this, on top of these systems in general, are we going to be okay laying, you know, the 45 mil for sure? Uh, the 60 mil, what about 80 mil? Are we, are we getting too heavy for this system or is this going to be okay? 
No, 80 mil can definitely work with it. You just want to make sure that you've taken into account that weight of the stone to, and again, it's not so much the paver deck being supported because what we will do is we will provide a design based on the span from beam to beam or beam to uh, ledger board or from footing to footing. Uh, based on, you know, what type of stone you're using. But I mean, what I always tell contractors is, I mean, unless there's a homeowner absolutely uh, wants that one job that's that needs an 80 mil stone. I think I used the example last time we had a customer who used the old uh, Teco Block Olympia 80 millimeter stone. He had it in his driveway, he had it on his walkways and he wanted it for his elevated deck. Uh, and he wasn't going to budge on that. And, and uh, so th- there was no issue with that because it was designed, framed uh, accordingly. Now, obviously, you look at a product like uh, Teco Block, their Blue Series, they have the 80 mil for vehicular traffic, they have their, si- their 60 mil for pathways, and then they have their 45 mil for a cladding application. So any of these systems, you can get away with using a thinner stone. So the benefits are they're lighter, easier to work with, quicker to cut. And cheaper, right? So I will, I would always recommend to the contractors is, you know, if you can recommend a cladding stone, it's, it's, it's going to be easier for you, but that ultimately comes back to the designer and the wishes of the client. Now, I'm going to make some assumptions here as to, you know, what we've been talking about with these previous two interviews. And correct me if I'm wrong in thinking this, that if I'm showing up to a customer's house to look at a, at a project and they have an existing deck, and I look at it and say, the structure is still there. I can uh, offer you the Silka grade system as a good, uh, a good solution to offering them a stone um, raised deck. If the structure is not there, I can then offer the, to replace that structure with wood and still offer them that Silka grade system. But if they want to spend a little bit more money and have the this the uh, you know peace of mind of this paver deck system, you know that's the option there for them as as say uh, maybe an upsell or you know just for them to spend a little bit more money to get that steel system. Is this is this a safe way of assuming you know maybe a contractor can go in there thinking uh, having this in mind? Uh, absolutely right. I mean, it comes down to uh, you know again the the cost and the design of the deck, right? I mean, with re- with respect to cost, it, it the stone is going to be first of all the biggest factor in the deck, right? I mean, if somebody's using a uh, a stone that's going to cost five dollars a square foot versus you know using like a porcelain uh, paver that's going to run ten bucks a square foot, you know you you right away you're you're doubling the cost of the stone. With respect to the average cost, um, you know we talk about you know from a contractor perspective, paver deck is going to run you uh, anywhere between ten to fifteen dollars a square foot, and that's you know all your all your beams, all your panels, all your screws. The price varies depending on design. So if, if a contractor is talking about a basic ten by ten deck, one beam attached to the house, that deck is going to be under eleven dollars a square foot for the paver deck. If some if if a contractor is talking about an elaborate deck where they're going to put a, you know, a large outdoor kitchen, a pizza oven, a hot tub, uh, you know, a a massive stone fireplace. And we need to now add supports underneath those structures in terms of beams to provide that extra support. You know, that, that design is going to start creeping up. The most expensive one we've ever done was under $15 a square foot. And that was a a job in Oakville where again, uh, the homeowner, you know, had a massive stone fireplace, a pizza oven, like all, all these fantastic spaces and features that just required that support. Right. When you, when you talk about the Silka grates, again, depending on the pricing uh, of the grates, contractor pricing is uh, 750 a square foot. And then, you know, framing is going to run you, depending on the uh, pressure treated lumber, three to five dollars a square foot. So from a price perspective, they may come out to be just about the same. Right. Uh, it's going to come down to, again, the comfort level of the homeowner, which one they, they want to use. I mean, you know, we, we've seen some. Customers say some pretty funny things, right? Like uh, one contractor called and let us know that there was a homeowner that absolutely didn't want paver deck because they were scared of lightning. A homeowner like that, you're not going to change their mind, right? I mean, it's and at that point, you, you, you sort of offer him the other solution and they went with a Silka deck. 
they had that uh, peace of mind, right? There's there's other customers like oh, I'm. There's no way I'm going to take the uh, the Silka deck because if my deck catches fire, the plastic's going to melt. Well, if your deck's on fire, I think you have bigger problems than than just that, right? So again, it's 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 being able to offer the different products to to the homeowners from an ability to work with within some of the finer details. Contract there are some contractors that will find the the Silka system working with wood is a little bit easier to work with because it's easier to cut rip, shave, grind the wood down as opposed to the steel. But I've also heard the same thing uh, from other contractors that they find the paper deck easier to work with because, you know, they can go to Home Depot and buy all these different galvanized Simpson brackets and they're able to MacGyver something. So it comes down to the, the right product. I mean, with respect to all of our products, uh, I wouldn't say there's one better than the other. It's uh, th- There's pros and cons to everything. And, and what it is, is for a contractor, they're just tools in your toolbox. So when you're able to go to a, to a homeowner, you know, that a homeowner who is afraid of lightning, you say, well, I got an option. That homeowner that's afraid of fire, well, I have an option, right? And some of these products are definitely not going to be right for all applications. But again, some of these products are going to be the fantastic option as opposed to doing, you know, the old method of excavate, build your base, build up your wall stones, do that. And then again, in, in, in a number of years, and I mean, you can be the best hardscape installer out there and spend tons of time and, and, and tons of effort. But in the Canadian climate or northern uh, U.S. climate, when you start getting those freeze-thaw temperatures and the rain and then the freezing and the expansion, those products are going to shift and move, while ours will not. Yeah, and a couple of things that you mentioned there, quite specifically, especially in this market where contractors are having a tough time finding the labor, uh, you know, offering this this uh, paver deck system, the silica grade system, where you're not going to be spending that time on labor on, you know, doing an excavation and bringing in gravel that you would be installing at like a raised patio, say, with a retaining wall border with putting in the gravel and everything that comes with that. Instead, you're just installing a deck and uh, putting stone on top of it is just a major, huge savings. And not only that, but value for the customer. And Greg, you talked about, uh, you mentioned quickly there about a paver deck install that also had incorporated into it a, like a pizza oven and everything like that, which made me think about incorporating with these, these outdoor living spaces into, say, a, a paver deck or something like that. What, what can we do with, uh, installing, say, an, a pizza oven or an, a grill island? You know, things like this in, into a paver deck system. Is this, is this, is this an option or is this going to be too heavy for the paver deck? Should this be installed, say, on a lower level, uh, in, in installing a proper base? Absolutely not. I mean, what I can say, whether it's paver deck, silica, tile deck, any of our systems, we have yet come across anything that these systems cannot support right so if you want to put a 12 person hot tub we're doing a job where it's a second story so again we talk about these uh, innovative products that stone deck innovations offers i mean we're not only talking about products decks that can be a foot off the ground two feet off the ground we're talking about products that offer a stone deck a story or two story off the ground and i mean we were doing a job where a 12 person hot tub was going literally on a second story paver deck i mean it comes down to obviously understanding the weight of what you're putting up there understanding the mechanisms of attaching to the house or to the footings having the appropriate amount of footings to support that structure and it all comes down in design i mean at a certain point i i I would suspect that if you're putting uh such a large structure up there that it might not be worthwhile but in terms of uh, things that we see, uh, stone planters, stone benches, pizza ovens, outdoor kitchens with granite, you know, hot tubs, fireplaces, we have not come across anything that the, the Silka system, the paver deck, the tile deck cannot support. And then the beauty of these is running any of the mechanical. So in a traditional hardscape where, you know, you're pouring those concrete pads, you're, you're doing all of the base preparation, you have to take into account plumbing, the, the, the electrical, the gas, lighting. With our systems, you can easily run all that underneath. And then if there was ever any type of uh, repair issues, access to those becomes easy as opposed to having to now to dig up and, and, and disturb the, the base to try to fix something. 
We've talked about warranty, we've talked about installation, we've talked about a lot with Paver Deck, and it's an exciting product. And there's an, another product that you guys also offer, and that's the Tile Deck. It's a it's a product that I don't know much about, so I'm really interested in hearing more about it and what you what you have to talk about. So can you give our audience a little bit of a rundown about what this Tile Deck is? So like I mentioned, uh, with respect to the uh, Paver Deck product, uh, that product is made by a company called Evolution Decks. And they came out with a new product last year called Tile Deck. As you recall, the Paver Deck is a complete structure that includes sort of the framing as well as the top portion of the under deck ready for the stone to be put on top. So in situations where somebody has an existing deck, a uh, wood deck, and they want to transform it into a stone deck, uh, the paver deck wouldn't really suit or meet their needs without demolishing that whole structure. So Evolution Decks kind of realized that and wanted to kind of to follow suit with the idea that Silka System had that you can basically retrofit a deck or create a new deck using wood framing. The tile deck itself are galvanized steel panels that measure six inches by four feet or 48 inches, so two square feet per panel, that are laid perpendicular to the joists and are screwed in. So if somebody has, you know, for example, a, a 10 by 10 wood deck coming off, a, you know, a patio door or, or a second story balcony and they want to transform that deck into a stone deck, they would remove the decking boards, 10 by 10, 100 square feet, you would need 50 of the tile deck panels. Uh, when the tile deck panel is sold, it's it's uh, sold with the appropriate self-tapping stainless steel screws so you don't have any type of reaction with the galvanization as well as any of the chemicals in the pressure-treated wood. And, and these panels are, are screwed down on top of the existing wood framing. And then the same concept for build. So if you're talking about a, you know, a deck that's, uh, you know, a couple of feet off the ground, creating your walls, you're framing the, the structure in, you're using a uh, half inch cement board, or you're using types of some type of wood or composite skirting or leaving it open and cladding your stone. Once you've done that, you've established your outside perimeter. You're putting down geotextile to hold the polymeric sand or bedding sand in place on top of the tile deck. You're gluing your capstones around the perimeter and then you're dry laying your stones and sweeping in your polymeric sand. So uh, it's basically a subfloor that gets attached to your framing. So if you're dealing with an existing deck, you're utilizing the framing. And again, depending on the, the thickness of the stone and the weight, you will then have to do some calculations to ensure that that deck is strong enough that doesn't need to be beefed up you know again and you'll, you'll find a lot of this information at stonedeck.ca under the tile deck page and or if you're in a uh, position where you want to create a, a new deck using uh, wood framing and use the tile deck panels as your subfloor you can construct a new deck and the tile deck 20 year warranty can support uh, the weights and loads as needed gotcha so with this system how does it compare in cost to say the silica grade system so it's actually the, the same cost. So the Silka system and the tile deck are 750 a square foot uh, contractor pricing. The only difference with the tile deck is, uh, I mean, there's an added cost of our stainless steel screws. Now, that being said, if a, if a contractor is uh, using Silka and they're buying decking screws, they're, you know, they're buying the decking screws anyway. A contractor can buy their own screws, but I mean, we obviously have spec the appropriate self drilling, appropriate length, uh, wood, steel to wood screw that's, uh, stainless steel. And then when it comes to installing this, is it is it similar where we're going to put a, a geotextile fabric over top of it before laying our pavers and everything like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it comes down to the style of stone that you're using. So, for example, if you're using, a, a you know, I use this uh, Teco Block Blue 45 where you want a sand joint and putting down geotextile down first to hold in the polymeric sand, keep everything in place. If you're using, for example, a, you know, a 2 by 2 20 millimeter porcelain paver where you're not going to use a sand joint and you use spacers in between, what I would recommend the contractor to do is, you know, just speak with your customer and see, put down 
down a couple of tiles on the tile deck uh, before installation with the appropriate spacing that you know the spacer that you're going to be using and see if because the tile deck is obviously galvanized steel it's the silver if they can live with that color showing through the 1 8 or 3 16 inch gap again some customers can be very uh, particular and if they can't live with that silver look and again depending on sun position and you know uh, angles then putting down a geotextile just to blacken out and at that point you can use a relatively cheap geotextile because it's not doing anything from a you know a structural perspective except just masking the color where where can our audience go to learn more about this product and where can our audience learn more about the the referral program that you guys have got set up there Again, stonedeck.ca, uh, under Paver Deck, there's lots of information about the deck itself, the various pieces and panels and the screws, and then under resources, you know, how to build the stairs with them, how to work with the Paver Deck kits themselves, the engineering, like Paver Deck is, uh, has a UL and as CSA approved. All that information is there. And then again, stonedeck.ca under our galleries and Paver Deck. We purposely just sort of display our paver deck and other jobs. We kind of like to show a lot of it without the stone laid because, you know, that's what these products are about, right? It's the, it's the substructure as opposed to the, the finished project where a lot of people will be like, well, it just looks like a regular stone deck. You mentioned the referral program again. I mean, Stone Deck Innovations, what we're offering is a contractor network. It's a fantastic opportunity for contractors that are looking for different tools in their toolbox to help drive revenue to them. Because what we do is we'll have customers reach out to us, like I said, from across Canada. I'm in Ottawa. I'm in Montreal. We refer them to our contractor network, choose a contractor off that network, and they contract her directly. There's no cost or obligation from the contractor's perspective. The only thing that we ask is that they understand our products. So when we refer a customer to them, they're not, uh, you know, turning them away because they have no idea what a paper deck is. And then we were able to provide all the, the, the support and everything uh, to that contractor from flyers, brochures that they can uh, give to their clients, you know, giving them display ideas if they're doing, uh, you know, various home shows or trade shows, uh, as well as providing them the training and education. I mean, what, what contractors, you know, within the hardscape industry have to realize is there's a tremendous amount of business out there that as a traditional hardscape contractor, you're missing. Uh, I mean, we had our marketing company do a bit of research and uh, there's six point five million decks that are built in North America every year. So that's a lot of decks that these customers are going to the big box stores or to deck building contractors and they're they're having wood decks put in. After a number of years, the majority of those people are tired of the way that deck looks and they're turning to the composite uh, market to then help transform their wood deck into uh, a composite deck. So there's there's a lot of business that as a hardscaper, you're not able to tap into thanks to these products. You can now tap into some of that lucrative market and i mean the beauty of some of the stone companies and what they're realizing is people like the wood look so there are some products out there especially within the porcelain industry that are coming out with some fantastic wood looking products so you can utilize these products and create that wood looking deck that's going to last a lifetime and never move or shift Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. Visit us at howtohardscape.com for more information on the subject and let us know what you want to learn about in future episodes by reaching out to us on our social channels. We are at How to Hardscape on Facebook and Instagram or send us an email contact at hardscape.com. We'd love it if you subscribe to the podcast, left us a rating and review. Again, this really helps us get this podcast out there and to get more guests onto the show to deliver you more value. And we look forward to meeting with you next week on the How to Hardscape podcast podcast.